in part three and subsequent parts, I'm going to be reading to you a poster presentation uh, given at the IEE 33rd ICOPS meeting uh, by uh, physicist Wallace Thornhill and mythologist and archaeologist and historian Dave Talbot. Uh, it's a pretty interesting uh, presentation. It's called The Electric Comet. Uh, it's written at a, uh, I'd say, a high school senior level uh, of knowledge, so there might be uh, some terms that might be a little confusing to you, but, uh, but I think overall, uh, after watching parts one and two, uh, you you will get a, 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 the gist of what they're talking about. Uh, I don't think it's uh, overtly complex. Okay, the introduction. Quote, Comets are perhaps at once the most spectacular and the least well understood members of the solar system. End quote. By M. Neubauer, Jet Propulsion Laboratory. For several decades, plasma cosmologists, inspired by the work of Hannes Elfin, have urged astronomers to consider the role of electric currents in plasma discharge in large-scale cosmic events. According to these theorists, electricity may be the dominating force in galaxy and star formation. But only a few have considered the role electricity might play in the spectacular displays of comets. Recent findings about comets call for a new perspective on these bodies. The more we have learned about comets, the more the discoveries support an electrical interpretation. Highly energetic and focused jets explode from comet's nuclei. The jets exhibit narrowly confined filamentary structures over great distances, defying the expected behavior of neutral gases in a vacuum. The surfaces reveal sharp carved relief, exactly the opposite of what astronomers had predicted of these dirty snowballs but a telling clue as to the true nature of cometary displays. Comets have unexpectedly high apparent coma temperatures and are sufficiently energetic to emit extreme ultraviolet light and even x-rays. Water and other volatiles are in short supply or are completely absent on the comet nuclei. Observed electrical transactions with the solar wind now fascinate cosmologists, but their explanations remain obscure and contradictory and a perplexing number of comets mysteriously explode as they dart around the sun. <clears throat> None of the newly discovered attributes of comets were expected by the standard model, but the recent findings are not surprises to the electrical theorists. They are predictable behavior of an electric comet. The dirty snowball model. Point one. Comets are composed of undifferentiated protoplanetary debris and dust and ices left over from the formation of the solar system billions of years ago. Point two, radiant heat from the sun sublimates the ices. The vapor expands around the nucleus to form the coma and is swept back by the solar wind to form the tail. Point three, over repeated passages around the sun, solar heat vaporizes surface ice and leaves a rind of dust. Point four, where heat penetrates the surface of a blackened, shallow crust, pockets of gas form. The pressure breaks through the surface and energetic jets form. Now the electric comet model. Point one, comets are debris produced during violent electrical interactions of planets and moons in an earlier phase of solar system history. Comets are similar to asteroids and their composition varies. Most comets should be homogeneous. Their interiors will have the same composition as their surfaces. They are simply asteroids on eccentric orbits. Comets follow their elongated paths within a weak electrical field centered on the sun. In approaching the sun, a charge imbalance develops between the nucleus and the higher voltage and charge density near the sun. Growing electrical stresses initiate discharges in the formation of a glowing plasma sheath appearing as the coma and tail. The observed jets of comets are electric arc discharges to the nucleus, producing electrical discharge machining, EDM, of the surface. The excavated material is accelerated into space along the jet's observed filamentary arcs. Intermittent and wandering arcs erode the surface and burn it black, leaving the distinctive scarring patterns of electric discharges. The jets explode from cometary nuclei at supersonic speeds and retain their coherent structure for hundreds of thousands of miles. The collimation of such jets is a well-documented attribute of plasma discharge. 
The tails of comets reveal well-defined filaments extending up to tens of millions of miles without dissipating in the vacuum of space. This violation of neutral gas behavior in a vacuum is to be expected of a plasma discharge within the ambient electrical field of the Sun. It is the electric force that holds the spherical cometary coma in place as the comet races around the Sun. The diameter of the visible coma will often reach millions of miles and the visible coma is surrounded by an even larger and more improbable spherical envelope of fluorescing hydrogen visible in ultraviolet light. The primary distinction between comet and asteroid surfaces is that electrical arcing and electrostatic cleaning of the comet nucleus will leave little or no dust or debris on the surface during the active phase. Even if a shallow layer of dust may be attracted back to the nucleus electrostatically as the comet becomes dormant in its retreat to more remote regions. The Electric Comet, the Electric Sun the electric comet model does not stand alone, but in partnership with another hypothesis, the electric sun. In the 1960s, engineer Ralph Jurgens, an admirer of Hannes Elfian, proposed that the sun is a glow discharge in the center of an electric field extending to the heliopause. This field is the cause of solar wind acceleration. In the 1970s, Jurgens elaborated the electrical con the theoretical concept and suggested that a comet's display is provoked by its electrical exchange with the Sun. The comet spends most of its time far from the Sun, where the plasma voltage is low relative to the Sun. In remote regions, the comet moves slowly and its charge easily comes into balance with its surroundings. But as the comet falls towards the Sun, it begins to move at a furious speed through the regions of increasing voltage. The comet's charge, developed in deep space, responds to the new environment by increasing internal electric polarization and by forming cathode jets and a visible plasma sheath, or coma. The jets flare up and move over the nucleus irregularly, leaving scars typical of electric discharge machining. The comet may shed and grow anew several tails, or it may explode like an overstressed capacitor, breaking into separate fragments or simply giving up the ghost and disappearing. If the electric theorists are correct, there is no mystery in the gravity-defying behavior of comets. A gravitationally insignificant rock on a highly elliptical orbit can be an electrically powerful object. One of the observations leading to the dirty snowball theory of comets was that most of the periodic comets began to grow tails at about the same distance from the Sun, between Jupiter and Mars. The determining factor was thought to be the distance at which the comet became hot enough for water and other volatile substance to evaporate into space, creating the coma, or head, and tail of the comet. But this general pattern did not hold up. In fact, four years after the comet Hale-Bopp left the inner solar system, it was still active. It displayed a coma, a fan-shaped dust tail, and an ion tail even though it was farther from the Sun than Jupiter, Saturn, or even Uranus. The comet's tail was shrinking, but it was still about five times longer than the distance between the Earth and the Moon. At this distance, the Sun's heat will not melt ice. If it could, the icy moons of Saturn and Jupiter would be as dry as our own scorched moon. Enigmas abound! The frequent erratic motions of comets and apparent violation of gravitational laws have long been attributed to jets erupting from the nucleus. But the electric model, the jets are not released under pressure. The imagined jet chambers do not exist. The jets are created by electric arcs to the surface, accelerating particles into space. It is these arcs that carve out the well-defined surface features. NASA's Stardust spacecraft captured the above images of Comet Wild 2, or pronounced VILT 2, on January 2, 2004. On the left is a Stardust image of the comet nucleus, and on the right, a composite of the nucleus and a longer exposure highlighting the comet's jets. According to a Stardust Project press release, mission scientists expected a dirty, black, fluffy snowball with a couple of jets that would be dispersed into a halo. Instead, they found more than two dozen jets that remained intact. They did not disperse in a fashion of a gas in a vacuum.